Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed in now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome in to the Penny Bloom podcast and welcome into the Andor after party. We just finished Andor and they're in. It is time to party. I am joined by Joseph George. What's up, homie? Uh, What up, what up? It was a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it is always a pleasure to have you. Announcement! No, I don't have anything exciting to say. It is just the name of the episode. Uh, Announcement. Uh, Episode 7 of Season 1 of Andor here. uh, Directed by Benjamin Karen and uh, written by Stephen Schiff. Uh, Interesting little fact about Benjamin Karen's direction. He He directed one episode of one of my favorite shows of all time, Sherlock. Hmm. Want to give me? Want to give me a guess as to what single episode Ooh. of that show he directed? Shit! No, it's gonna be is is it with Moriarty? Uh, yeah, a little bit. But what's interesting is that it's not even really that. Like, it's just nuts because he directed only one episode, and it was the finale of the show. Um, the like, I just feel like three finale, the end end four finale or yeah. four. Okay, well, there were four. Yeah, like he okay. directed the the last episode of that show and it was the only episode of that show wow. he directed which i feel like is i don't know in my head that's strange usually the person who directs the finale is has been connected to the show throughout its you know run <laughs> yeah. but like they were just like fuck it get get ben in here let's see what he's up to um, wow he's got it the, the yeah, end of the show uh yeah, but yeah he uh he killed the direction here it was a it was a really fucking good one but uh I'm going to handle this scene by scene in a semi-similar way to the last couple times we've done it where it's more character-focused each time instead of just going place to place to place to place, you know? Uh, But are you ready for it? Oh, I'm ready for it because there's a few things that I need to talk through. I don't want to make any claims as to who someone is. I don't know. There's just a little. Oh, there's some things I need to talk through. So yes, I'm gonna All need. Right. All I right. need to see. So, we kick this episode off with Cyril, and he's uh, he's sitting by his window in Coruscant, seemingly waiting for that sun to come through the window. Yet it never arrives. I was I was praying with this choice that when he gets called away and finally decides to get up, that the sun would fl- flash by after he'd gotten up, just to be like, oh fuck, you missed it, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> come here. Uh, just, oh, dude, that would have been. I didn't even think about that because it is really only like three seconds that they if get. That. It's like it's like if yeah. That. Oh, dude. And he like he just turns around and sees it and is like, oh, motherfucker. But uh, yeah, Narc, he he's not having a great go of it. He uh, he's he's heading out to to breakfast, ready for an interview. Uh, he's he's all tailored up as he as he is wont to do with his new brown suit. And uh, Edie, his mom, is giving him all the shit in the world. The collar. What about it, mom? It's a bit tall, isn't it? You know what it says to me? What does the collar say to you, mom? It says that you're you you're desperate for approval. Oh, that's funny. Coming from you, mom. The woman who is criticizing my every single move. Um, I. <laughs> <laughs> He's very just blunt with her like he doesn't have any emotion when he's talking to his mom no like whatsoever it's like all right anything else oh really cool wow he's just figured out that she's the way she is he can't do anything about it arguing back is pointless anytime he ever even makes an attempt at it she's like shut the fuck up you idiot you know like it's like yeah and just a couple of insufferable people here uh narkin narkinidi um, one and I'd say Narc is a bit more insufferable. Edie, Edie, E E D Y, 
E E D Y Edie. Edie. Narc mom. Mama Narc. Mama Narc. Edie Narc. Narc. Yeah. Narc. But, I don't like uh, Narc being referred to by uh, like Cyril. Ugh. His name's Narc. Um but yeah, Uncle Harlow's managed to hook him up. You know, he's he's got him he's got him an interview in the bag. Um <laughs> He's he's ready to he's ready to go work for the uh, the Bureau of Standards. Yeah, uh, big time. Doesn't that sound fucking fun? Big time. The Bureau of Standards. Uh, oh yeah. Yep, he's got his nice little corporate cubicle, uh, and he's. Uh, I tell you what, they entered that room later on in the episode, and I was like, oh, what a fucking hellhole this place looks like. You know, the Empire has a habit of sucking the life out of everything. Uh, I have a feeling that no matter how who's in power, this area has has no life. You know? Yeah, no, that's... Oh, that's that's a rough room to be in. But it and makes it sense. Like, like, the way they showed us the building is like it was, it was tucked between like two bigger buildings. So it's just like, even if there are windows, you're not going to be getting sun here. You know, it's like... You are dealing with the mundanity that you deal with all the time, and you're going to deal with it here. You're going to sit here and turn this little fucking knob all the dude all day, and, uh... <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Amongst five billion other people on the same floor as you. Yeah. Yeah, that's... The choice at the end, too, which I really liked, was the slowly zooming out, starting, like, right above his cu- cubicle, then, like, the surrounding six, and then the surrounding 60, and it's like, oh, yeah. And they're all just twisting the knob away, turning, 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 through everything, turn, 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 you know? Yeah, this, I don't know, I don't know how Uncle Haro was, uh, I don't know. I, I see why uh, Narc was hesitant to to just get a job from him, because, like, I don't know. Mama Narc was talking him up as if he was like going to get him a real good, a good job, and he was like, "He's going to be." That's, uh, I think this is saying something about, uh, you know, what is oh. often perceived as like a good career, a good steady paycheck. You know, uh, I think there's also something that they're they're saying there, like, uh, well, at least at least you have a job, at least you're working. There's got to be more to life than this shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like this, this can't be all there is. Uh, I think that's kind of what they're getting at with the whole like uh, he'll get, he'll get you a nice, good job. It's it'll pay you well. And uh, he kind of he kind of knows that he's gonna have to start uh, start from the bottom if he wants to make it back up. I I have a feeling that somehow this Bureau of Standards, Deidre, is gonna have to get something from them. She'll come into contact with Cyril. Maybe Cyril discovers something about Andor's involvement on Aldani. And when she comes in, he's like, this is my moment. I can finally make my way back up to the top. Let me talk to this ISB agent. Mm. He just kind of goes and talks to her and is like, I know something about the Aldani heist. And she's going to be like, uh, she's going to be like, excuse you. You know, he's going to get like rushed by like whatever trooper she's got with her. And she's going to be like, no, wait. Let him speak. You know that the, the classic trope. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, no, that's, I, that's what I'm. That's I what I'm that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering. I was wondering how Narc's like where Narc's storyline was going. Well, you know, and, and, and that's my best guess. I have no clue if the the shit he's doing. It's even possible for him to find out something about Cassie and Andor on Aldani. Like I don't know what the fuck he's looking at all day. Hero of standards. I couldn't even give you a guess. Yeah, I don't know. Unless, yeah, I don't know. Unless he can just use his computer to access information that he's yeah. not supposed to. Um, and then maybe that's how he gets fired. And then that's how he goes to the ISB. And I like that. I like that line of thought as well. These are all all distinct possibilities. One thing I do love regardless is that surreal is just the narc he's gonna get his shit tailored what's mm-hmm. funny to me is like who's the tailor he goes to that he's he's just pulling like does he tailor this shit himself is that is that what we're supposed to is that what's implied here 
I don't he know. Always says, he always says, I got it tailored, but like, uh, I, I want to know the tailor who's like, oh, fuck this guy again. You know? <laughs> yeah, I don't, oh, I don't you know. got another job, huh? Hmm. This this I don't know, but the the caller the the mom was right. It did make him look more like a narc, which is probably what they were looking for there. Honestly, it's it's like I don't know. That's that's probably exactly what they're looking for. Yeah, um, yeah. Is, uh, uh, they're looking for someone who is devoid of any self respect. I mm. think for this sort of job to go, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I could submit myself to this for hours upon hours, uh, day mm. to day. Week after week, that seems this seems like a fun fun gig. Um, so yeah, I think that I think the caller might have sealed the deal for him. In fact, job wise, yeah, yeah. maybe uh, I think Uncle Haro actually knows what he's doing here. Maybe maybe he knew maybe he knew what he was doing for him. <clears throat> but that's as far as we get with Sorrel this episode. He do, he gets far and away the least amount of screen time as we we like. You know, I'd prefer mm. not to spend a lot of time with Narc week to week. Mm-hmm. Um, but elsewhere on Coruscant, you know, Mon Mothma is taking a last minute visit to stop by Luthen's, uh, his little shop of, shop of antiques and such. Uh, and she, I love, I loved this whole sequence. Uh, the acting mm-hmm. on both their parts, incredible. Uh, the way that, uh, you know, Clea is like, uh, Senator Mothma's here and he's like, unannounced, I see. Like, all right, what the fuck? And, you know, he has to get in character and stuff. And the way he turns his back and he's just <clears throat> wishing on a dime. And then he turns around and he's got the smile on his face. And she walks in and she's like, was this you? And he's like, oh, how I wish. How I wish it was. Oh, what could have been if it was. Uh, and she's like, it fucking was you, wasn't it? And he's like, yep, I told you this shit's going to take a lot more than what's funny is he set this in motion before he had that conversation with Mothma about how she was going to get an outside an outside yeah. help on, he on was, her. He was playing. This has been planned for a while. Yeah. Like what? They, 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 they've been there for months, months. right? They said, yeah. yeah, like, I don't think we've gotten like a strict number, but this yeah, was no the like, way to happening. No matter what, even if she had a handle on her funds, this was going down, you know. This, yeah, this I mean, cool. I think Luthen has a point, you know, in saying that, like, what's the point? You know, what what are we going to keep doing this for if we're not going to actually go? You know, we need it's either going to dwindle out and die, or it's going to grow. Like it's mm-hmm. that's how it's going to have to how it's going to have to happen. And I think it's I think Mon knows that but she just doesn't want to accept it because she knows what that means she knows that like this is the start of like it getting real and like it getting what's what's interesting is that she's uh you know it takes like all the way up to return of the jedi before she decides okay yeah i can't do this or can't do this politically you know and i guess return of the jedi might be pushing it but like uh a new hope at least you know even in rogue one she's like let me let's get galen or so let's get galen or so in he can testify against the empire he can tell us what they're building and then people will turn on them that is what will happen and you know the the homie over there was like yeah cassian go get him go bring him in let's testify and then he brought him aside and was like ignore everything you just fucking heard we got to kill this motherfucker okay like that's a we got to prevent him from building any other shit and uh and that's that's mm. what Mothma's thing is just she's going to try her very best to do shit without violence which is admirable but Luthen's point here you know has anyone ever built a weapon they wouldn't use mm. no if we've got the means we're going to act on it just as they will you know like that and we now we have the means we got 80 million credits out of this like <laughs> That's that's a lot of credits. How much? How much do you think is chilling in the uh, Mon Mothma f- family fund? Hundreds of millions, dude. Yeah, because like, if she's living like that right now, I mean, that could just be off her senate senator wage. I guess you know, 
but like uh i don't no. know yeah, she comes from money mm. she comes from she funds han solo and leia's uh honeymoon after return of the jedi just because she's just like <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah i got the money Sick. for that take that's a, awesome Take a ride on the Chandrilla Starliner. Huh? <laughs> Funny, I'm getting me and Quentin's phones are all sorts of fucked up. So I was getting a FaceTime from Johnny George. He was trying to call Quentin, and Quentin uh, Quentin picked it up. So uh, that's funny. Just a nice little tidbit there. I'm talking to you. My brother's talking to your brother. It's just wow. Going on what here. a thing there. Uh, what, a, wow. what a lineup there. But uh, <laughs> nevertheless, yeah. I uh, she's she's got it like that. She's got her hands on the dough. You know, uh, but she needs help getting access to that dough. And that's the point she tries to make to Luthen here. Like, uh, I got the meeting. It's going down tonight. Uh, and all the while, whenever she's like, wow, you really took this step. She's got the tears in her eyes. She's, she's not exactly fond of the idea that they had to take it here, especially when they walk in. Luthen's on that radio listening to the fact that they took in 134 Aldani's. Eesh. Yeah, didn't consider that consequence, huh? That 134 innocent people who had nothing to do with it are almost certainly going to die because of this. Oh, yeah. Or be enslaved. Like, yeah, yeah. like It's not going to be good. No, nothing Nothing good can come of it besides the fact that the Rebellion has money now. Uh, Do they go save those people? No. I think, think? I think I think that I think the I think that was just like a harsh little reality of the mm. of the cause that they're that they're pushing towards. Like it's like if we want to fight the empire, if we want to do these little smash and grabs, get out and go, we got to know that the people who are left behind are going to suffer because of it. The empire will stomp their foot. Yeah, I guess because Cassian learns the same thing about Ferrix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that makes total sense. I mean, it, and like <clears throat> Mon speaking here, like how scared she is, and like how she's like trembling. She's literally like almost hyperventilating as she's talking. Mm -hmm. Um. Like I thought, it, you know, that this scene would be enough to like get her the the performance nod. Um. It's you not, know, almost. But like, this isn't even her best scene. I don't think. No, that's like, exactly. Yeah. So. The next time, next time we catch up with her, she's up in her party, up with uh, up What's with that you know, dude's name, uh, Tay Colma. Tay, Colma. Colma. T A Y. Tay. And then last name Colma. K O L M A. Tay um, Colma. That's yeah. That's my favorite scene. Uh, oh, of the episode. Without it a was doubt. so fucking good this is the this was one of the main scenes that gave it that notch in the th spy thriller category mm. you know whenever he's like uh some of our political tastes have grown so extreme that i don't think you'd like Ooh. to hear it out. and he's like uh oh and she's like okay yeah walk with me buddy let's do this shit uh was i'm gonna tell you if Perrin and her hadn't been arranged to be married We'd have a lot easier time. Yeah. Sold, bro. Yeah. Take home with this woman's husband, and we'd be living fine over there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This. I don't know. They. They. They had some. Some chemistry here, for yeah, sure. That shit was. That shit was um, popping out at me. But. Uh, yeah. This and is a fantastic scene. Just the visuals. I like the the part where she starts getting a little more real with him, and they're like. Uh, they're kind of visually telling us that they have to be closed off by shooting it through like a little bit of like a, some sort of decoration that is, mm. uh, I can't think of the word, uh, breaking up the screen in front of us so that we can't see them completely. Um, and I was like, Oh, I love this. It was mm. so good scene. The constant reminders that she's like, smile, you know, we're, we're Talk. talking of childhood memories. We're, yeah. we're having a good time. Come they walk with me. Like, she's and she's like, she's like, don't tell Perrin. He knows nothing about this. He can't be trusted. And he's yeah. like, he's like, oh, so you really trust me? Oh, That's it's like that. Husband. Yeah, he's like, oh, it's like that. Yeah. I fucking loved it, dude. And the yeah, way she still doesn't tell him everything. Like, I'm yeah, arranging a Drillin' Foundation yeah. Fund, you know? 
and I would like you to help us out here. It's and, another worthless, pointless thing I'm doing. You know, oh, basically dude, the way I, she she's like, I know how I appear. The mm-hmm. the, the non decisive senator who who tries to get her way but can't most of the time, and it's all a facade. That's not what it's like. I know what I'm doing. I'm doing some said, real shit. She said my favorite line um, of the episode, and it was, I show you the stone in my hand, you miss the knife at your throat. Whenever Ooh. she's like, dude, in the music there? Like, whenever yeah. it's getting, like, real, and, like, it, like she's, like, really laying on the heavy details, being like, all right, like, this is way bigger than you think. Like, I'm, I'm not fucking around here. Ooh. You know, like... The music was just like, I don't know. It this show has done such a good job with the score and like oh making so every fun. moment, yeah, just hit. It continues to just slap week after week, but uh, yeah, this was up there for one of my favorite scenes. I figured you'd pick it, so I went ahead and slid, mm. slid mine to it. I was like, that scene will get its respect. I, I yours know is, it yours is good. Yours yeah, is good, though. Better. Yours is... It might be better. I don't know. Well, that's it, the thing. That I think... And we'll, we'll get there. I think this is probably the best written scene in the episode. I like critically the way it's acted, the way it's written, the score in the background. This was just absolutely so satisfying as someone who likes good television. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, this was just such a great fucking moment for the show. But... Mm-hmm. uh that kind of wraps up Mon Mothma's side of the story for this episode. Uh, she, she, she get like, I love that this episode took us to every major character so far. Oh, yeah. We don't, we don't miss anybody. And the fact that Cassian is the last of the major characters to show up, you know, mm-hmm. like it, it does take us through, uh, Nark and then Mothma and Luthen and then Clea, Vel, Cinta, like, and all the ISB shit before we even get to Ferrix with Cassian. Like, it's, uh, it was just impeccably well done. And, uh, I guess while we're, I guess if we're done with Mon, if we're still on Coruscant, can we talk about Vel and whoever that was? Okay. I was, I was wondering if you could tell who that was. That's Luthen's assistant. Yeah. That's Clea. She's, uh, she's decked out in a whole new look. Um, cause I've seen that a lot, like people online going like, who the fuck is this person? And I'm like, I was like, okay. that's, that, that is Clea. Like, you're not alone in that. Um, okay. I even, read, I even read a review from the vulture earlier who was like, and we meet some new mysterious rebel spy. And I was like, I completely understand because whenever I clicked on like the thumbnail, like she was the Andor focus thing for the, uh, the thumbnail today. So I like uh I clicked on it and I was like, Oh, I like I didn't recognize her then. It wasn't until she started like making her way through that I was like, Oh, I think that's clear. Wow. Hmm. Whenever she starts talking to her and like, let's 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 go there, you know, uh since since we are since we are here. Um she makes her way from that uh and I think part of the reason is that be she pops out of the spaceport. You know, so it kind of implied like she just yeah. arrived. Coruscant. That's, that's, yeah, I know. That's uh, man. I I really like did not piece that together at all. Like I, w- she was not in my mind, like whatsoever until you brought it up. I no, yeah. legitimately, I'm like, how old is Leia at the time? I'm like, is yeah. I'm like, <laughs> is, is this, this is you know? And, yeah, and I'm like, what? Like, who is this? And, and, well, and uh, this, this scene made it. Like I'm, I'm considering changing my favorite character to Clea because of, and you know what? I think I will. Uh, this Ooh. scene was fucking nuts. I absolutely loved it. The way that, and the fact that what's funny is you had a tough time recognizing Clea. It took me like a minute to realize she was talking to Vel. I right? was like, oh, yes. wait, that's Vel. Yeah. Um, she, she, that wig is just mighty unnatural on her. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, didn't exactly. You can tell she doesn't have Luthen's bag of tricks in her ship, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I loved this interaction. The way that Vel was like, uh, like, uh, Clea's like, I'm the one who recruited Terraman and Nemec, Gorn. They'll be remembered. And she's like, That's it. And she's like, Yeah, that's all there can be. You know, like, uh. 
we can't have giant services for them. We can't let them know they were a part of something bigger. Like it's, this is what a revolutionary, this is what a revolution is. Mm -hmm. They died in service of the cause. And I was like, oh my God, I fucking, I cannot wait for, for this Clea character to get far, far more involved. And, uh, but I mean, man, having them being like, he knows of Luthen, so he must die though. Like is kind of that's yeah. nuts. Yeah, like, she's she's like, hey, he's met him. He's gone. He's got to die. And it's this little bit that makes me think Vel is going to seek him out and break him out of prison instead oh. of instead of killing him. Being like, I think she takes him right back to Luthen and is like, he can be an asset. Like I have no doubts this guy is worthy of being a rebel. Um, It'll probably be because he has the manifesto still mm. on him. Right. Vel will see. He's in prison. Oh, What's he reading? Yes, he's in prison. In, he's going to read that fucking book, bro. Oh, I didn't even. God, I hope it's on him for yep. the life of me. I hope yep. it's on him. Yep. Um, oh, and Vel's going to go and be like, oh, my God, look what you're reading. You're not yeah. you're not worth killing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh. I Luthen saw something in you, so why, you know, why kill you? I don't know. Okay, okay, I, I dig. Another thing I wanted to point out about this scene with Clea and Vel, well, and just Clea making her way to Vel, is the sets here. Uh, the fact that a lot of these places are so clearly not things they built, they're just making use of real world structures that exist, like the overhead lighting and the halls that she was walking through on her way down was like, those aren't Star Wars lights. I guarantee you those lights are there all the time. The like really round circular lights mm. that are like warm yellow lighting above them. Like, uh, I think I'd be Man. willing to bet those are just, those are just there. You know, I don't think they Photoshopped that in. It looks like they're in a fucking parking garage pretty much. Yeah, it looks like, uh, like an airport terminal. Or yeah. like uh so yeah, or like a park parking garage. That's that's good. Yeah, now that I'm looking at it. Huh. It was just yeah, like they, they, that I took notice, like the structures are made of like brick, which like I don't know, everything on Coruscant is like metal in my head. So when I saw that I was like, We're getting to the nitty gritty parts of Coruscant here, like the shit that they don't they don't show you a lot. Um, which made me which made me really, really Yeah, like I mean, it. we only see like the temple, the Senate building like this yeah. the capital capital we only see the nice nice of coruscant and mm -hmm. this is just shit even when we went to the quote-unquote underworld of coruscant and attack of the clones with all the neon lights and stuff that was still flashy and pretty True. and stuff like that wasn't True. uh we weren't dealing with the, with the fucking brick in the ground and concrete walls mm -hmm. and stuff like or permacrete as they would call it in a uh, the star wars universe Mm. Uh, but yeah that was a fucking great scene and to have it cut with like these like before that scene we flashed to Senta to kind of let us know where she's at this the overhead star destroyer flying over and what a beautiful shot that was her getting Ooh. like overcome by a shadow and then uh and looking up and it being a star destroyer and Vel being like what about Senta and Clea's like she's doing what she was fucking told yeah. Okay. She's she's killing this shit right now. Okay? Don't send her shit. Don't send her any messages. We can't have that. Okay? Uh and <laughs> I just absolutely absolutely love this scene. This was another one that I almost I almost named my favorite scene, but I just uh What was she told to do? What is she doing? What what is she doing? Well, she was on that makeshift speeder thing. Just gliding, going down, going down a mountain. Is she fall? Is she going in the direction of the star destroyer? Is that what made her go? Or because she she seemed to be already kind of working before the star destroyer. She was, she's going somewhere, you know. Like yeah. I think this is probably part of the plan to get her off planet. Would be my guess. Um, maybe because, they are saving the Aldani. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe it is Sense's job to kind of orchestrate a orchestrate a rescue, but. Uh, that would be kick ass. Like uh, if they have the Aldani held there and they're taking them off planet with that star destroyer, maybe like they're intercepting 
the transport of them going from the planet up to the Star Destroyer to break them out or something. I don't know. Um, or, it would be sick if like that was even, built into the plan. Like, actually, even though. Even Bell was... Uh... Vel's disrespect for orders maybe it leads her back to Aldani. Maybe she go she just turns right around and mm. heads right back to Senta. But uh I'd almost like go with me here, you know, this is a lot of stuff, but like what if Vel gets caught by the Empire? Or not Vel, Senta gets caught by the Empire, Vel catches wind of that, breaks Cassian out, and they have to go back to Aldani together to get her out. Mm. I think that'd be some pimp shit. Um what are the odds that Senta could be sent to the same prison that Cassian is at right now? You know, yeah, that'd be pretty nuts. Yeah, like I wonder, how, like, like if if that planet is somewhere, planet or dude, what going to get expedited? Mm. Oh, true. Yeah. Um, I guess I didn't think about that. But yeah, what what that that would be kind of funny if they were just both in the same prison and Vel had to break both of them out. That would be pretty kick ass. I think that'd be a. I would just mm. firmly place Vel amongst my favorite Star Wars characters of all time if she had to orchestrate even more heists, but this time for people. Um that'd be pretty that'd be pretty kick ass. But uh mm. yeah, that kinda that kinda concluded things with Vel and Cinta. You know, they didn't get a lot of action this episode either. And that's what I kinda liked about it though, is that it was basically like the fallout of the heist for every single character and then Cassian for the second half of the episode. That's like, yeah. that's what we're gonna do. Like a like a transition episode. Like mm-hmm. get all the old characters, see what they're kind of doing afterwards, and then now let's introduce all the old characters that you're used to a little bit. And then like I think it's like the the from one arc to the next, whatever this one happens to be, which I guess it's, it's probably just his prison arc. It's prison arc, I think. Uh, yeah. So it's it, and, and breaking out arc. So yeah, it'll be exciting. I'm excited to get to the Cassian part of the story to have my theories put there. But uh, lastly, before we get to Cassian, is the ISB stuff. Mm, where, uh, ooh, this was this was very cool. Where uh, you know they're get the ISB is getting a lecture from one Admiral Yalaren. Who I don't know if you were familiar. You'll remember him from the Clone Wars. Uh, he partnered with Anakin a lot. He sounded a lot like this. No he way. Was, yep. Yeah. Yeah. He was the guy with the mustache on on every Star Destroyer who was in charge of. A Is lot that of- the actual voice actor in no, person, no, or just it's so. the character of him? So. It's just okay. the character. It is. What? It is Yalaren. Um, and this is actually That's how he starts off. Or wait, that's well, how he actually, ends up? Yeah, it's not actually his first appearance in live action. Um, he works for the recall, ISB? Well, he, he works for the Navy. He's kind of a breach between the Navy and the ISB. And his presence here is supposed to hammer home that they're taking this very seriously. You know, like the way he's like, I talked to Emperor Palpatine last mm-hmm. night. Um, You know, I have a feeling part of Gaz isn't just like, what's up, Palps? How you doing? You know, like... uh. You know, yeah, I think they're afraid of that. They're afraid of that man. Yeah, but uh, no, yeah, this isn't Yalaren's first appearance in live action either. He was present at uh, a certain meeting in 1977 where uh, Tarkin is like, "The Senate will be of no, no, uh, uh, fucking problems anymore." He's like, "This station is the ultimate power in the universe." It's That's that not, guy. Well, it's not him, but he's uh. there. He's okay. there. Okay, um, at the meeting, but not that guy. Yeah, okay. at the meeting, but not that guy. Uh, he doesn't. I don't think he even speaks, but he's there. Um, so that that was just a nice, nice, interesting connection to a to a larger Star Wars character who showed up in Rebels, who showed up in Clone Wars, who showed up in 1977. So Yalaren is a pretty large figure in the Empire, but he's letting them know about this new initiative, Pord, P O R D. You know, they're getting everybody the fuck out of there. They're like, anybody who fucks up will be there. That's how it's going to be. Yeah. That's how it's going to be. You know, if the Aldon, if that shit on Aldon, that ain't ever going to happen again. Tax him. Times five. Fuck him. Bring, you know, <laughs> who cares? They'll, they'll know not to steal from us by paying us five times more. Mm. Damn. Like, that's, that's, they're just going to get more people to rebel, you know? Like it's all they're going to that's all that's going to happen. Like, oh yeah, like Leia Leia warns Tarkin in 
in A New Hope. Like, the tighter you squeeze your fist, the more people are going to realize they can't. They can't stay there anymore. You know, like, they they will break out. And they will fight back. But uh, that's kind of what this whole this whole thing with Deidre is on this side of the story. You know, she is... She's taking it upon herself after the uh, the fallout of Aldani to go. Haha, this is exactly what I needed. This whole little new, this whole new little thing. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take advantage of our emergency act and get all the data from every sector. What's up, dude? Wake your ass up. Get me some data. And oh yeah, uh, <clears throat> my name is Attendant Fazoli. Um, I is like that really what it was? No, it was oh, something else, but uh, uh, sounded really, like Fazoli, so okay. I immediately thought of uh, you know fast food Italian. But uh, sir, ma'am, uh, sir, uh, sorry. sir, ma'am, ma'am sir, f- sorry, well, yeah, yeah, sorry about that, dude. Uh, I was sleepy, um, but uh, yeah, I almost picked him for my favorite character because this is this is exactly what I'd be doing if I was an Imperial. I'd be like, yeah, I sleep. Mm. Uh, ain't no way you're gonna get me to do shit here, um, but. Yeah, she goes ahead and gathers up all that, uh, all that intel, trying to connect the theft, uh, the, the various thefts of Imperial weaponry, and uh, not exactly sanctioned or with permission here. Um, but her theory is starting to come together a little bit more after after all this data, and uh, she she almost gets fucked over. You know, Blevin is like, <laughs> Mister Partagas, sir. I'd like to accuse one of our fellow officers here, sir, of a, of a, uh, you know, a little bit of a betrayal of her fellow officers. These are some serious charges. Would you like to, would you like to levy them? And I, I like, I, this is one of my, yeah, this was one of my favorite part of gas scenes so far where he's like, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think, uh, agent Miro has been, uh, abusing her power and has fucked over all these other. And he goes, that was a serious accusation. Are you really are you really ready to do this? And you, uh, Agent Mira, are you okay with us airing all this shit out in front of everybody? And uh she's like, "Fuck yeah, absolutely, man. I got this shit on lock." Uh and that was one of my favorite things about her in this episode. You know, it was just like, "Yeah. I know I know I'm not following the rules. We the Empire though." If it's in the name of quote unquote security, y'all are gonna let me do whatever the fuck I want because we're the Empire. Um, True. Do you do you think she's bluffing? Whenever, like, do you think she actually has all of that data and information and like hard evidence that this is happening? You think like she's for real in that? I don't or know. Do you she think has hard evidence? But I think she has a lot of stuff that could point us in the direction of such a thing um, because. It like she made it seem like they were like, and, and you're ready to present it right now. And she was like, yeah, like I know, and and he knows that I have something to present right now because and like that's why he accused me of some well, shit. If that's true, what does she have? You know, like what it? She said that there is thefts that are happening that are going back to a rebellion. Like she was like that are going all back to a like a single rebellion something well, i don't know but what what if she doesn't have the nail in the coffin and it's narc who has the ability to go oh cassie and andor did this shit on ferrix he was also on the shit in aldani there's no way it's not organized you know how would he know that he was on aldani well that's the thing he would have to he would have to do some heavy lifting for me there i wouldn't uh would know exactly how he found that information out, but it kind of uh, goes with the theory that he, whatever his job is, it lends him to figure some shit out. Um, yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't necessarily know mm. that already though. Um, hmm. Hello. But yeah, Blevins get it, gets his ass ate here. Damn. Um, yeah, dude. Dude thought he was coming in with the hammer. You know, he's yeah, like, oh, I got this, and he's. Deidre was like, yeah, I got all that shit. And, and part of guys was like, fuck yeah, you do. Blevin, you're off barracks. It's hers now. Morlana won. It's all yours, boo. And uh, Blevin's like, yo, what the fuck? Uh, hey, yo, Deidre, walk with me for a second. <laughs> yeah, Deidre, walk with me for a little bit. You got to watch your fucking back, homie. 
And I think that might have been a little bit of a warning, like a uh, one, a real one. He's like, yeah. he did good, but he's gonna they they, they're gonna to come you. for you. And yeah. I also think it might have been a little bit of what you were saying. Like he's like, he didn't make her present shit. Do you think it's because he's like, I like your initiative. You can't keep doing that though. Yeah. Like at some point, someone will call you on that shit. Will make you present whatever you have. I believe that you you onto something. You insistent about it, so I'll let you keep going. But be careful. Watch your back. And the way Blevin was like, "Is that your fucking defense? That you're being careful? And uh, is there anything of more importance than a rogue intelligence officer?" And I mean, yeah, it's a little bit of a that's a little bit of a point right there, you know, like uh, if if she happened to be working against the Empire, she'd be really fucking them. You know, yeah. if she was able to cover up her activities because she's an ISB agent, that'd be pretty dope. Um, but obviously she is full blown fucking lady narc over here. Um, yes, sir. No, sir. I'm an Empire. I'm an Imperial officer, sir. Is there mention of it, that they have a mole in here somewhere, or am I just making that up out of nowhere? Um, I I don't think they have an I, a mole within the ISB. It shouldn't be long before they do. Um, because I don't know if you recall a certain character in Rebels, Callus was an ISB agent, and uh, he, eventually, uh, he eventually becomes a rat. Yeah, full blown switches sides. Uh huh. So it'd be interesting if, like, uh, at some point we see live action Callus just kind of there. I think that'd be cool. But uh, hmm. in the meantime, no, I like. Uh, I don't think they have one yet. I don't think there's any ISB agents yeah. that are like, ha, 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 I'm reporting back to somebody. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Deidre, she's a uh, she was fucking shit up for herself there. You know, her climb, her climb to the top within the Empire. It's looking like it's going her way for now. But with that, we will finally head over to Cassian Andor's storyline for the episode. And uh, his was a goodie. And far and away the most time spent with our boy Cassian here. Um, because after the after the financial you know, score he's come into, the 30,000 credits, he feels comfortable in making a quick trip back to Ferrix. Uh, he's he's ready to he's ready to pay up. He's ready to see his mama again. Ready to see his little pet droid and his 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 boothang Bubba Bix. But uh, mm -hmm. you know he's not met with exactly the warmest welcome as he would have hoped. And uh, I think that's to be expected. You know I didn't know it would be quite as harsh as it was, but I you know it does make a degree of sense. I think I we we actually talked about it. Uh, I think one of us predicted that like whenever he came back it wouldn't be a warm welcome because everyone would, would blame him for the empire coming there i think yeah, one of us yeah. we did we did we that. did briefly talk about that at least a week mm -hmm. ago i think uh, probably a week ago when we were talking about him going back to ferrix but uh and i think i think really only these are the only two people on the planet that would be kind of cool with them i guess maybe um brasso brasso would probably be like yeah bro He'd as long be in the middle of the road he He'd probably punch him in the face and be like, fuck you for doing what you did to the planet. Give me yeah, my money. You. And then and give him a hug. You know, like, he's just be like, be God damn people. it, fuck. Like, why do you have to be the way you are? Yeah. Uh, or, you know, or, uh, but. Yeah, um, they're, they're a good duo. I, I, I just, uh, I really liked everything about the time spent on Ferrix in this episode. It was such a, there is one little issue I have with it. Um. It felt a little fast, just kind of like boom, 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 boom. Like uh, no reacquainting with Cassian. Like when we got to Cassian and he was just on Ferrix, I was kind of like, oh, yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, you're uh, right. I was like, oh, no shit. All right. I was like, did I did I miss something? Did Was there a scene with Cassian earlier? No. He's just back on Ferrix. He's immediately at Marva's place, mm. uh, which I mean, uh, but after this point, I'm kind of cool with it. Um until the jump to the other planet, it's like, I, I can't even tell how long has he been here. Has it been days? Has it been weeks? Regardless, it doesn't really matter. The same thing, the thing's happening, how it's happening, so I'll I'll accept it. But, uh, you know, Cassian, he's paying a visit back to Marva. Uh, he's, he's like, 
It's time to get the fuck out of here, Ma. We gotta go. Let's go tonight. And I loved B in this scene. B2 emo. What a little fucking cutie. I oh. love this dude. I love this dude. Uh, he's just like, Cassian. Mm. So excited to see you. Um, but oh. you know, Marv is like, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just so tired. Mm. He's like, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I'm crazy. You sleep, you rest, you get packed up. We'll go first thing in the morning. And B2 is just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. First thing in the morning. Yes. Woo. You know, he's, he's super excited. And, uh, it, it was just a lot of really like, it was cute, but it was a little heart wrenching because you could tell like, you didn't want to go. Uh, like that was like my inst- like she's I'm like she's not just tired. She's well, like she, she does not want like, to go. I think she's a little disappointed. Like, no shit. You want to? Oh, just fuck up this whole to, planet and go. You just like, you expect me to just pack up and fucking leave? Like, this is where your dad died. This is where we've lived since we picked you up. This is home, you know. Like, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to abandon this place now. And it does get aired out a little bit later when she's like, I have to stay and you have to go. Like she completely understands why he's not going to, why he Mm. can't stay. But it's like, you can't expect me to go with you. And that breaks my heart, but, but you can't, uh, but, uh, it's, uh, Ferrix has, you know, changed, you know, she informs him about, uh, Tim ratting and he's like, Mm. yo, what the fuck? And then he's like, yeah, Bix. He's like, wait, Bix knew? And she's like, no, he was she, he was chasing her down. She was trying to tell you he, he got killed by Corpos or something. And Cassian's like, fucking good. Um, and not really, but, you know, kind of what we're all thinking. Fuck Fucked him. him. Fuck him. But, you know, he goes ahead and leaves her after this because uh, he's like, you know what? Yeah, that's cool. I'll go see Bix. You get a rest for the night. We'll leave tomorrow. And uh, he makes his way on over, and she's far less happy to see Cassian. Um, you know, she he's like, "Yo, who the fuck did this to you?" And she's like, "Hey, man, we've uh, we've had a hell of a time since since you you skedaddled. You kind of fucked everything, and everyone kind of thinks so. Um, sorry and shit. You know, I I have an appreciation for you, but." You really screwed us here. We're we're not in a good way. And uh he's like, Man, shit. Fuck. Damn. That uh, her her scar, that's like from the trooper like pushing her against the wall and like yeah, it's like I think that. that's yeah. Like it's okay. only been it's yeah, it's been a couple days like, or a yeah, week. It's been like yeah, if Maybe? That, like he got dropped off on Aldani. Yeah, three days like, since three the days mission. before the operation. Yeah. He did the operation, and I think he came straight to Ferrix. Like I think, I think it's been like five or six days, um, since since the shit on Ferrix. Like, okay, yeah, because the news is just hitting. Like the yeah, yeah. So okay. oh yeah, we got. Yeah. The, I forgot to mention that with Narc earlier, the little TV in the wall and stuff, seeing like the the galaxy from a far far galaxy far far away's version of newscast, mm. <laughs> the hollow net, but. uh yeah, the new the news is just hitting. It's it's relatively fresh, so it's it's been probably max a week since he okay. left Ferrix. Um, everything is really fresh. You know, he's obviously done a lot of living in the last week, yeah. but everyone else is still reeling <clears throat> from what happened on Ferrix. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's felt like it's been like a month just because of how much has happened, but it's just been three days. You know, or like yeah, yeah. it's just been a couple days. Um. Because I, I I was thinking like these uh, scars on her face. I'm like, oh shoot! Like, is, is she with like a bad dude that's like beaten like her? And then I'm like, oh no! Like, it's it's, it's literally the days. scar that like just she that just she got. got yeah, reflected. like yeah. 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 Oh, and the way Bix was like, and and we got a nice little confirmation here about Cassian and Bix's uh, relationship. You know, uh, Tim thought we were back together. Yep. So we are for sure confirmed Bix and Cassian at one point did have a relationship. I mean, all we uh, know is Cassian is good with the women, dude. He man, was he how long man. was he on that planet before he got Bro, You know what? You you know my biggest prediction? One night. 
<laughs> that was the next morning, bro. He left Ferrix. No, no. But like he left, <laughs> left Ferrix, got to that planet, found a woman, went, let's go, honey. And they were they were good for the night, you know? Um and the fact that Damn. he takes on the name Keith, oh I fucking love that. I fucking love that. Just like the, the weed smoker in me is like, yes. Keith. What was but, his last uh, name? Keith. Like Gergo or something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keith. Keith. How does he come up with these? I don't know. Maybe we get a little backstory on a, on somebody he knew named Keith. That'd be a that'd be interesting as well. But um yeah, Bix is like, hey man. Good seeing you and shit, but you gotta go. You gotta get the fuck out of here. And he's like, fair enough. Here's 12,000 credits. Give it to everybody I owe. Bye. You know, Nurchi, Brasso, the other two. I only ever remember Nurchi and Brasso because Nurchi was a real one. I like seeing him in episode one. Nurchi? And, uh, I think it was Nurchi. No, I'm trying to, who, like, who uh, that he was. was. The, uh, he was the dude who, who had, like, the giant guy who came up behind Cassian. And oh, stuff. oh, and okay. Like, uh, yeah, that was Nurchi and his buddy. I can't remember okay. who the other guy was. Okay, but, uh, okay. Yeah, Nurchi. But, yeah, so he leaves the money behind, and he goes ahead, and we, we head on back to uh, to Marva the next morning, it seems like. And the way B was just like, Mama Marva, he's b- b- back. And he like rolls towards the door and he's like, I was just c- c- coming to find you. I was like, oh, this guy is so fucking precious. And it broke my heart, this scene. This is this is when we start my favorite mm. scene of oh. the episode. Oh, yeah. Um, Whenever he comes in and he's like, you haven't packed. And she's like, yeah, I haven't. I ain't I ain't going nowhere. Um. He's like, yo, what the what what's going on? He's like, and she explains that the rebellion, like, it means something. What what happened on Aldani inspired her to a point where she's like, there's something brewing here on Ferrix, and we we're we're ready, you know. Like this is this is something I wanna I wanna be a part of. And uh, he's like, the shit on Aldani that was just a that was just a robbery. And uh, you know, she t- she tells him the day I I avoid that road. Because I can see your father hanging there every time I go. But the day mm. after the news broke, I put on my coat and I walked straight through there with a smile on my face. And the way he kind of like looks down and he's got like a little bit of like a a little bit of a smile without like she a, called him a hero too. Yeah, like she's he's like, like if, the the, if if the if those few heroes can go up against the you know the empire and and carry out a mission like that, and it was just like. He took know, some and then, pride and, for half a second. And what sucks is that, like, he is nowhere near, especially, like, I thought maybe he'd be a little bit of the way there, but he is still nowhere near the rebel we know. This man mm-hmm. is still selfish. He sparks across. the rebellion, basically. Sparks I, the entire rebellion. He did the very first big thing the rebellion That's did. nuts, dude. The first and, like... Not the last thing that the rebellion the, did, but like the the, the spark for, that burnt the empire down was Jin yeah. Urso and Cassian Andor, and the fact that I mean Cassian hasn't read Nemec's manifesto. It's only a matter of time before he does, though. Um, the fact that the empire was burnt down by Jin Urso, who learned from Saw Gerrera, and Cassian Andor, who read from Nemec, is just fucking brilliant the only like a group a small tiny group of people taking on an entire imperially imperial controlled planet there are only two people we've ever met who would have the balls to do something like that and they are saw Gerrera and fucking nemic you know what i'm saying like it's just so perfect that these two end up being end up being the uh the key to that but one thing that was also so crucial about this scene was learning why Clem was killed by the Empire. Potentially the most impactful moment, and no doubt the most impactful moment, on who Cassian has become. Oh, yeah. His insistent inaction 
is due to the fact that Clem told him not to act. He tried to prevent others from acting, and it got him killed. Like. Uh, I could see how that fucks you up. Like oh, yeah. That. I mean, I saw that, and I was like, ooh. Yeah, and just, him, like, like, general, him, the general he's imagery hiding, of it. Yeah, like, while he's hiding from, like, troopers walking, you know, and he's like, please don't come down here. But he's like, I, yeah. I want to go out there, though. You know, he's like, don't come in here, but maybe come in here. But no, um, and it's like, yeah. and then like, and then he, oh uh, no, yeah, that man, that and the the imagery that's used there is just so fucking heartbreaking in general. Just because, like, I mean, very very real world stuff. A couple of, a couple of people, vandalize and cut, throw shit at cops, and the unarmed black man who's standing there is the one who gets punished for it, and. Oh my god, was that just heartbreaking when they all just stopped? The Empire has never been so fucking scary as they're presented in this show. Yeah. Like, I mean, when like, they just stop and they just turn and it's like, it's robotic, it's mechanized, but it's all people in there. You know, so like the a, coffee drink at the same time. The, they, yeah. they are all like the infinite desks. You know, like it's literally like we've gotten the the Palpatine and the Vader fear of the Empire. You know, of like okay, that's why we're literally afraid because they literally will kill us if you know that. But like, really, who does most of the killing? Or the just these troopers? The soldiers. Or yeah, like. I just on the daily, like just yeah, wrecking. I mean, and I, th another thing I loved about this episode was the the phantom presence of Palpatine. The way in the ISB agents like meeting, he was like, "I spoke with Emperor Palpatine last night." And then when Mothma's talking to Luthen, and she's like, "Palpatine won't hesitate now." Yeah. You know, like we're getting heavy mention of one of the biggest Star Wars characters of all time. He won't show up in the show. Never will. I don't want him to. I, do, I don't expect that. And but his presence, nevertheless, will be always felt, which yeah. is so fucking interesting. You know, like it's such it's so yeah. effectively done. But uh, another part of this flashback that was really interesting is the flashback of the kid who seemingly just rushes a bunch of stormtroopers um am i to take it that that was cassian i don't think that's that what was. it's it's kind of what it seems like they were making it out to be though but that's what's interesting is that in the other flashback when clem dies he's his age like cassian is he looks as he does now and then the kid they show charging imperial You're soldiers right. looks much younger and i don't know if that's just because he's having like a flashback so he basically is living the moment he's remembering or if that's like uh oh i didn't think about that yeah i don't, I don't because know because it, say it isn't him what does that do what does that show does that show like oh wow even this kid can act while i can't sort of well, thing was, is that it like paralleled, it was paralleled with marva saying if even these few people can take on the empire like it was in that moment that it flashes to the kid Take, trying to take on four stormtroopers and they don't show us what happens but I have to think it's kind of what happens when you charge at four cops with a weapon like uh could it possibly be a flashback within a flash no because while Cassian's that age he's well I guess at the, no I guess that's like after he was rescued he'd be, that'd be like it, I guess that kid looks about to be like after Marva would have uh, taken Cassian yeah but you think if if Marva picks him up before the Clone Wars even happen? Yeah, th then yeah, yeah could no, like, Cassian I, I even be that age kid. in it's fight? Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. I think maybe it's like a, a friend of Cassian's from from a, from his young days who tried to take on the Empire and died, and it's just another example of a kid who had an impact on his life who died trying to fight the Empire, died in the face of the Empire, and so he's seen both sides of the coin. Inaction leads to death. Mm. Action leads to death. I should just stay the uh, fuck away. Um and so he just keeps he just keeps running, he keeps trying to get away from it. But the best 
one of my favorite lines of the episode is Marva, whenever Cassian's like, I won't be able to rest. I'll be worried about you the whole time. What's what the hell? And she's like, well, that's that's just love. You You can't control that. I love you more than anything, but you have to go and I have to stay. And I was like, I was fucking tearing up. Bro. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I oh, was yeah. like, oh my god, this is so fucking good. And this is, you know, it was a little bit more reminiscent of like episode five, where we not episode five of the movie, episode five of this show, where it was just we didn't do anything besides talk the yeah. whole fucking episode, and. I'd argue even more so in this episode. Is it just nothing but speaking? Sure. Um, and it was so uh, yeah. damn effective. And uh, and that that just that whole scene between Marva and uh, Cassian had to be my favorite. That part where it just broke my heart when B two is like, a, "Can I talk now?" And she goes, "No." And I was like, "No, let the boy speak." Yeah, come on, man. I want to know what B wants to say. You know, He's I like, want to. Oh, I mean, maybe he, is he, is he saying like you could take me with you? Is that what you think he's saying? You know, um, or like probably some shit uh, like I, can, can can I go? Oh no, I bro, I'm not ready for the day that the empire destroys B. Mm-mm. I'm going no. to fucking lose it. No, he's he is still alive. <laughs> Post episode nine. He yeah, lived he, through it he all. He is canonically, uh, what's the immortal? Um, I don't know if I posed this theory on the podcast. I know I tweeted it a while back, but the reason his like uh, vocabulator stopped working is because he was the one who taught Cassian mm-hmm. basic. Mm-hmm. That's I. I would just love if we got a little confirmation of him being the one who. They don't wore out his vocabulary teaching him basic. They don't put a droid in the show with something like that and then never touch it. You know, they they they, they have to. a flashback where he didn't have the stutter. Yeah, and he was looking clean too. Okay, yeah, you're no. Nah, they have to. They have to. Like, I don't know. It would be really cute to have like a, a Cassian and, and B, you know, growing up together montage. Um, just showing like his childhood as he's in prison, just remembering his childhood going be, from like. It won't be as Cassian's in prison, bro. It'll be as B is being destroyed by the fucking Empire. And it's gonna hurt like hell. We're gonna get, I think we're gonna get a parallel between, you know, K2's ending and B2's, B2's ending. I can't, like, sort of like, and the fact that last week it was, the, Nemec was like, climb, and K2, whenever he was dying, he told no, Cassian, to I know, climb. no, I saw that. <laughs> Bro, the fucking, the the riding chops on this fucking team is nuts. It's so goddamn good. But we haven't even we haven't even gotten to the end yet. You know, uh, Cassian decides that Marva's right. She has to stay. He has to go. He doesn't like it, but he accepts that this is the position he's in. And this man's still still not the rebel we know yet. Um, still not the rebel we we come to love in Rogue One, but uh, I can't wait for him to get there. I, I'm wanting him to get there so bad because it just sucks to keep watching him. Like he can, he can stay on Ferrix if he chooses to fight. Now he doesn't have the means to fight properly yet. I don't think he will need need help but the, he's got the whole city of out of Ferrix. Yeah. They, they've shown out. You know, they've showed up and showed out before like but I guess do, to, they don't want to wanna ride for him. To Cassian though, he did just spend 3 days um camping in the middle of nowhere with nothing at all and just did a super hardcore mission, killed someone, watched someone else die. Netted 18,000. And he's like, I need a beach. I got bread. And I need 
a woman. He was like, come on, Marva, let me take you somewhere where we don't have to remind you to keep the heat on. Uh-huh. And she said, nah. Nope. This is where I stay. And I was like, God, I fucks with you, Marva. And so I almost, I, that's who I originally had as my favorite character prior to switching it to Clea. Mm -hmm. But uh, I figured since I gave Marva the favorite scene, it'll, uh, it, it all evens out. You know, I wanted to show love across the episode. but. Uh, Oh, we, you know what? I've given Mon Mothma enough love. I gave her the performance and the scene. I'll give Marva the character nod because she did own this shit. Um, she so she will get some. Scene. Um, well, and like, what's ah, dude? It's just gonna suck because I she, don't. See... She instantly strapped up. Do you she immediately grabbed the gun? Dude, you're right. You know she has to be the the favorite character she was like a beach a good life all the money you know we could have no i'm fighting God, give me a gun Marvel was such a pimp in this episode you're right that's so hard oh, um, sorry for interrupting you hard right there but i forgot oh, that no, she you're okay you're strapped okay. up no i uh i think we're gonna get a paralleling moment uh between uh clem's death and marvo's where clem died trying to prevent the rebellion whereas marva will die stoking rebellion um and i think that would be the spark that would light the fire in cassian to have his own personal rebellion you know um hmm. okay i see like she she I don't know. She does something on Ferris where maybe there's like a, a a really big dent, or she leads the 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 you know maybe everyone looks to her as like the the town elder, you know, like the mm -hmm. wise the 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 rebellion leader there, and she like dies trying, I need, you know. I need Marva whatever. and I need Marva and the bell ringer to just rig the fucking hotel that the prefect hooked up with with some fucking bombs and just blow that shit up like i hope Dude, that that's the rebellion attack we see what if the bell ringer is like the or he orchestrates the fight it's like oh. that's how they do like it's like, like he's uh, like a fucking band on the titanic bro yeah they don't play until the sh they play until the ship goes down bro Dude. oh oh i would love that even in you know it's it's game of thrones you know ring ring the bell the bells you know mm. uh, they they sometimes mean war you know and and in star wars it could mean the same thing on ferrix here oh, we got the bell ringer oh, he's gonna be all right boom, boom. he's gonna get into it you know give him a gun too boom, boom. he just snipes boom, boom. turns around snipes another dude oh i hope there is some like you know, it's it, it hasn't been exactly this type of show, but like the Battle of Ferrix. Oh, that'd be yeah. oh, yep. that'd be so that'd be all the so gloves, all, all the gloves, gloves on the wall. I don't well, know the way they've shown that the city is so densely packed that, like, say God forbid, they were to knock down the bell ringing tower with the bell ringer on it, sort of as a like, mm. you know. The Empire doesn't fuck around. They'll go ahead and do that shit. Mm -hmm. It would destroy a lot of shit on its way down. That's surrounded by some... By a lot of a lot of shit. I just feel like we could get a really epic Ferrix battle sequence. I feel like this could be like a Call of Duty map, Ferrix. It's fucking... Uh, kind of does look like it, yeah. You're right. I really, really... I, I mean, I love... It's already one of... It's become one of my favorite, like, environments in Star Wars, and especially... Like all the different species and people we see on the characters we see on that planet, I just uh, I really it's really like Ferrix. It's like a more doable Tatooine. Yeah, yeah, I'd I'd tolerate this place more than I would Tatooine for sure. Yeah, especially prior to Imperial occupation, this this town seemed like they were tight knit as fuck. They were, it's a real community, you know, I, walkable, you know, not a lot of alleys. True. You know, any anything you need is like right around the corner. Hey, let's head down to the marketplace. It's right over there. You know, they, if they don't have it here, they don't have it anywhere, according to that one fucking traveler who we haven't seen since. That one random old dude, you're right. 
Who was that? It was just a guy. Is is it really? Really? They're not going to come back to him? It was just think, really a dude on the train? I or think, on the uh, transport? I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, we were like, all right, who is this fucker? You know, no one looks like this and, and just gets away with it on the show, you know? And it's just... <laughs> no one... No one talks to someone on public transportation. Who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Um, but no, nah, he's just the guy who was talking to Luthen on public transportation. Uh, you know, whenever he was like, uh, watch your wallet. You know, he's like, <laughs> he was just a fucking nice guy. Imagine that's part of gas. Part of gas? Part. Yeah, part of gas. You got it right. He goes undercover like Luthen too. That's ah, him. Yes. And it, it, they were both talking to each other. And. I don't know. Of them knew it's, it. There's no way. No, uh, no, absolutely not. But I, I like the theory. I love the theory. Um, <laughs> but with that, let's top off the episode with Cassian's time on a new beachside Miami type planet, Niamos. Um, where you know they they came here, and I was like, oh, new new fucking dream vacation. Okay, vacation. let's go. To party party planet? Yeah, party like... planet, bro. They were having fucking spring break in this hoe. Whenever they showed like the the old lady like sipping and the alien who was like <laughs> like fuck yeah, that's exactly what I want in my Star Wars. It reminded me of just like I don't know, like Jabba's Palace, the fucking oh. uh most most Espa cantina in the Book of Boba Fett, like that type of shit. Oh, dude, give me that. There is already Empire presence here on this planet, and Cassian still went there. He was like, this planet is good enough that it doesn't matter. I'm going to this planet. This well, is the I party it's also planet. Important, I think it's also important that Marva was like, whenever he's like, we can go. We can get out of here. And she's like, where can we go that they haven't already reached? Mm. And he's like, we can we can find somewhere. And she's like, I'm already in that place in my head. They can build all the barracks they want. Damn true. That was me. strong. You know, mm. they can't fuck with me. I was like, Marva, you goddamn G. I fucking love this woman. And Fiona Shaw just continues to fuck that role up. But uh, I'm tempted to just change my character back to Marva for the love of God. It was just everything she said this episode is so fucking cool. She um, did fuck this episode. She she went brazy, but yeah, uh, yeah he's used his uh, stolen credits to go ahead and uh, head on out to Niamos, where he's uh, he's apparently bedded a beautiful woman. She wakes up, Keith, Keith, where are you? And he's like, he's in there with his secret stash, which and... oh, I guess is still up there. Oh, I didn't yeah. think about that. That yeah, is that where the manifesto is? That'd be my no. guess. Yeah. I don't so think he doesn't it. have it. I don't think he just carries imagine it. he care. Imagine though he carries it on him that would everywhere be cool. he goes. Though. That would be cool. Oh, and it was just like a little glimpse. The of The one thing he had on him. Oh, that'd be so pimp. That'd be so pimp. But you know how thorough are the like imperial prisons? You know, I'm imagining he gets locked up in some sort of prisoner outfit. Or I don't know. The empire's all about you know balling on a budget so maybe they're just like you whatever you're wearing you're wearing that for the next six <laughs> years homie um mm. we won't wash that shit once um but uh yeah he uh he's he's getting into the secret stash he's like oh i i will you run to the store we need revnog uh, <laughs> green shit greeny greeny revnog and he's like yeah 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 yeah." she's like you liked it and he's like yeah i did I'll go get it. Um, let me let me head on out here to the store, and he's he's walking on down, and the shore troopers are chasing down some some ne'er do wells, who uh who are who are uh, apparently evading something. Um, I'm assuming they just kind of were existing, and they got chased. Oh, down. they were part of it. You remember they they were part of it. Oh yeah, of of Whatever. it. They were yeah. part of it. Um, of what? Uh, to be honest, sir, I couldn't specify for you. They're just running. Why not catch them? Uh, that was the most infuriating shit. I was just like, oh my god. Um, but I, uh, I got to question Cassian a little bit here. His ability to think on his feet. You're surrounded by people who are sitting. Plop your ass down. 
let these shore troopers pass, and you continue on your way. Now, obviously, he climbs these stairs, and it's not necessarily these shore troopers who fuck him over. It's the guy who's sitting at the top of the stairs, him looking around over his shoulder. Hey, 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 what are you doing? I'm just what do you think for- you're doing? Yeah, he says, what do you think you're doing? You're looking and- around. Yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm fucking nothing going to the store. Yeah. He's like, you're looking around, though. It's like, it's a fucking beautiful place here. The beach is over there. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Um, why are you sweating? Were you running? Uh, dude, it's a, it's a hot beach, and I'm fully decked out in pants and a long sleeve shirt. I'm hot. Uh, yeah, it's exactly what someone who was running would say. <laughs> are you a part of it? A part of what? Hey, I'll ask the questions here, bud. I was like, oh my god, I want to throat punch this motherfucker. Ugh, yeah. This was... I want to throat punch this motherfucker the way I want Clea to throat punch me. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, something about it. Seems okay. <laughs> okay. Like if, if, Clea, if Clea approaches me and is like, "I need you to kill somebody in the name of rebellion," I'd be like, "You had me at I need you to." You know, like whatever you fucking need, Clea, I'm there. You t- you order me where wherever wherever I need to go. As long as you tell me to go there, I'm going. Uh, Vader, <laughs> what's that? Vader. She goes, "Hey, I need you to take out Vader." I'd be like, Clea, you're the you only know- person I do this for. Clea, you know, you know, I, I do just about anything, but you got to be realistic about some things, Clea. You, you know, I, you, you, are, are, do you hate me? Or are you just sending me to die on purpose or what? You know, I, I can know. only be kept on the hook for so long. Uh, I can, I can only, I can only wait around for you, Clea, for, for, ex- <laughs> for so much time. Uh, when are you going to soften up a little bit? Mm. Uh, but no, yeah, if Clea's like, I don't know, I need to kick you in the face for this cover i'd be like you don't even have it doesn't even have to be for cover just kick me in the face he needs to hook um, me up with that star killer armor ooh. she's got the hook up she's got the hook up for so much cool shit and so oh, and this history. this episode we saw a temple guardian mask i don't know if you saw that like a jedi temple guardian mask really? that was in the background during one of the during one I of the scenes i was like yeah, i didn't notice that huh i was like yeah yeah but uh this little interaction, sorry, I, I this the shore trooper infuriated me so much. I had to think happy thoughts in my yeah, mind. Yeah, true. Clear. You're right. Um, it just gets worse and worse. Too. Yeah, and Fuck. the way he treats this dude, just like the way he treats uh, Keith, as he's as he's known here on this planet, um, not not particularly well. And he's like, uh, "Hey, hey, uh, droid assistance, need a droid." And we see a good old KX unit walking on up and you don't even realize because his arms are so goddamn long for a few seconds that he's holding on to two people at the bottom of him and then goes ahead and someone else another droid throws another one of the motherfuckers and it's like oh that guy might be dead i don't know um and uh damn yeah so uh this this shore trooper is uh, is guilty of being a dickhead and also all too nonspecific uh, hang out with him until uh, until I get back. Did he say hang? No, 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 no. He meant he meant watch me. He meant watch me. Hang? No, 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 no. And I was just like, the way this was just. If I didn't know when Cassian dies, I would I would have been hyperventilating. You know, like I I would have been like, because it was already a little bit like. Oh fuck! Because there's also the tie to the fact that his father was hanged and stuff, and it's, it's like that's almost certainly be coming back to him as this guy's like hang, hang, hang. I, mm-hmm. I imagine once yeah. once that's happened to you, you go ahead and associate that word permanently with your dad being hanged by the Empire. Mm-hmm. Um, Safe and, assumption. Yeah, and the way this man presses him up against the wall, like this was. Like he was getting his ass choked here. This was, was no those, joke. those some strong droids, you know. They Ooh, pinned his ass up there, made him hang out there. Uh and this is uh it's it kind of gives you a little bit of a view of what K two could have been capable of and was capable of on multiple occasions if he would have just, you know, completely let loose. Mm. 
Um, and I'm sure he did over the course of the years. We don't, we don't see him in, uh, in Rogue One, but, uh, so yeah, a lot of, a lot of speculation man. on, on the internet that this droid is K2 and that's how they met. Um, but how does he get back to him? And like, that's my thing. These droids are all over the place. They're Imperial security droids. Like there are two maybe, of them in this scene. Maybe that's how he breaks out of prison. Is he rewire like gets one of them and rewires it and uses it to break out. Ooh. And then that's how they form I, their, I would like that. That'd be kind of dope, but uh, that'd be, that'd be pretty pimp. That would be pretty impressive of Cassian to be able to do that on the spot in a jail cell. Um, Fair enough. That that's tough. That is a that is a tough ask. Uh, but he, you, know, you never know. I don't know. Manual he, labor. They send him out there, and he's like, "Hey, KX droid, come here." Just tops on his shoulders, and he's like, just goes full tech in the Bad Batch with it. <laughs> just all it takes is just one wire, just oop, and then twist like two new wires together. That's all it takes, you know. And he's I don't like, know. Cassian. Yeah. Cassian. Hmm. Em, I, uh, I've empire. I, what does that even mean? I feel like there's I, some sort of thing where uh, the re like I think in the Rogue One novelization is where I read it. In K 2s like final moments, he's like remembering his whole time with Cassian and stuff. And obviously, the books they change shit from the books all the time just because they're like, oh, this would serve us better. But uh, so who knows? But the way they they describe K2's sort of transition from an Imperial droid to the rebel droid we come to know him as, it wasn't exactly a switch on the dime. It took uh, it took years mm. of, like, a rewiring and then retraining the droid, like the way that Quill does IG-11, how he was a hunter droid turned nurse droid. They kind of did the same thing with K2 here. Um, the primary difference it- being that they gave him free will. Do all of those droids have like that deep voice like that? Like, you know, I was uh, I was willing to bet money that like I that was my instant thought whenever I saw people speculating. Oh, what if this is K two? I was like, he doesn't have like a similar voice. And then I was like, ah, but when you rewire it, I'm sure the vocabulator can be adjusted and stuff. It's not like is there anyone that has an accent that because like what if he learned how to talk? Like he does through someone, because it probably wouldn't be Cassie, and he doesn't really have that. No, yeah, um, not exactly the Alan Tudyk type, uh, type sounding voice. Um, but that's another thing too is that Alan Tudyk, the voice actor for K two, and the guy who was in the the motion capture suit as K two, uh, he said that he was not he was not asked to be in season one, but. Liam Neeson also said that he would never do TV. So, true. Here we are, and I mean, no offense to Alan Tudyk, I love this guy, but he's not Liam Neeson. So, Andrew Garfield did say that he was not in No Way Home. Um, yeah, so. Essentially, everybody who's ever been a surprise in anything said they weren't in the thing they were a surprise in. You know, mm-hmm. you follow me there. But yeah, Cassian goes ahead and gets sentenced. After this, we head to the to the courthouse. Basically, where a judge calls his name, uh, Keith, I, I want to say Gergo. I don't know why. That's probably wrong. It doesn't even sound right to me anymore. Um, uh, Keith, Keith. And he's like, yep, that's me. What's up? Um, and he's, they start listing the charges and he's like, yo, all of these are a really, really big stretch. Uh, anti imperial speech. Not once did I say anything anti empire. I wasn't fleeing a scene of anything, you know, like I didn't do any of this shit. And uh, she's like, yeah, these charges, they used to be six months. But I have a feeling because of this P.O.R.D., mm-hmm. this recent act put into place after Aldani, six months has changed to six years. And Cassine's like, yo, what the fuck? That's ridiculous. And she's like, take it up with the emperor. Um. And it feels very, very clear that he will not be going to jail for six years because if he did go to jail for six years, he'd still be alive. Mm-hmm. Um, How long do you think he's in there before he breaks out? Is he broken I, out or does he break out himself? 
You know, like that's the thing is that uh, I I got to put money on he gets broken out. Um, Luthen. Ooh, unless the readings in the manifesto start to, and not to mention he's getting locked up for something he didn't do. There yeah. will be countless people wherever he's going that got locked up for something they didn't do. I think that this time he spends in prison will be formative in him realizing just like the, he's already seen, obviously plain to see the brutality of the empire. But I think when he sees just how it affects people on an even smaller scale, like getting locked up, it doesn't seem like it would be as big a deal as all the murders they're committing. But whenever all these people are locked up for shit they didn't do. I think it's got it's got to radicalize mm. him a little bit uh, that in pairing with the potential readings he gets out of Nemec's manifesto. I think maybe maybe he organizes a. A, a revolt within the prison. Mm, uh, okay. I think that would be a really cool route to take this. Maybe his first first examples of rebellion on his own is a uh, they take this like abolitionist stance and are like uh, the, the prison conditions are bad and we need to get the fuck out of here and uh, they deserve better. Like none of us deserve this shit. I think that would be really really cool especially since they've been taking a lot of really real world tones throughout the show. Yeah. I expect the politics of this of this writing staff seemingly would not be so opposed to going at uh you know prison systems uh, because mm. feels like a, feels like a natural progression especially now that Cassian is going to prison. Uh Yeah, this uh, I wonder how long they'll spend here. Like if it is a whole 3 a episode arc my, for it. I think he spends the entire next episode in prison. Um, I think this first episode is him getting sent. Second episode, he spends the whole time there. Third, he gets broken out. Could Um, there be anyone there already? Okay. Okay. I like that too. Could like Han be in pre, you know what I mean? (laughs) Right. Right. No, Um, I, uh, I, if there's anyone in prison who we already know, It'll be someone we barely know, you know, it, like it'll be someone who's like popped up. I'd be willing to bet like, uh, I don't know, that dude who's like Saw Gerrera's rebels, like one of Saw Gerrera's guys could be in there, you know, like uh, some shit like that. Maybe that's another part. Like maybe there are Saw Gerrera rebels who are st- locked up in this prison he's heading to and maybe that's what causes him to be radicalized even further they start talking to him about this shit and they're like and he's like oh interesting okay okay cool 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 one of my uh one of my favorite parallels is that uh cassian gets locked up under a uh under a pseudonym a name that is is not his own um and when we find Jin or so in Rogue One, she is locked up under the name Liana Ta- uh, Liana Tanith or Liana Halleck. Mm. So, like, uh, it, it's cool that they both get locked up. Like, he's he's Keith, she's Liana. They're not under their real names or anything. I, I like that. I like that little parallel as well. Um, and it's probably part of what gives Cassian a little credence to trust Jen. Is like. I've been locked up. I know we got you out of prison. It's not like that's something that's going to make me go, mm. "Oh, I don't trust you." Um, oh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be this. This will be a cool next couple episodes. Uh, I'm curious mm. to see how long they like will stay in prison for. Um, I feel like th- a whole episode. I, yeah, does he break out next episode? Probably not. Like it no, well, and that's the thing is that yeah. the way that we've split this story up, I'd be willing to bet next week we spend some more time with the Vel. Um, some more time with Mon Mothma. You know, it seems like once an arc, specifically in the second arc, you know, the first arc was very, very Cassian-centric. The second one, there were there was an episode there where it felt like he was barely on screen and we were mostly spending time with other characters. And I feel like that's kind of what we can expect next week. We'll come back to him plenty, obviously. It is his show. But uh, I don't think it'll be out of the ordinary for him to get less than half the screen time in the episode. 
Mm. I wonder, it, like, is there a possibility for bail at all, like, for this? Or is it, like, six years no matter what? Because, like, if he just calls, like, his girl and he's like, hey, yo, on top of the shower, there's all these credits. Mm. Um, and then, like, what if what if she just straight up, like, takes him? And then he's like, fuck, now I'm actually all by myself. Like, I have to, like, rebel. Like, I have to start something, you know? That would be interesting. I have the feeling Cassian doesn't exactly get, uh, you know, I have a feeling the Empire is not like, you get one phone call. Mm. You know, uh, I get the impression that they're sort of, uh, yeah, you got locked up. You're going to serve that sentence Damn. now. Yeah. Um, we're not letting you call a lawyer or anything. Um, <laughs> nope. Yeah. But yeah. I think this is going to, I think we're finally getting to a point where we might be able to motivate Cassian to action on his own. Which uh, I've been waiting for. I'm waiting. I've been waiting for him to finally go at it on his own, and I'm uh, I'm ready. I'm ready for that. But uh, okay, maybe maybe he can get visitors, and that girl goes to visit him and gives him the manifesto. I was I'm trying to think of ways that he can get the manifesto if it because like no way it's on him. Like and if they if they just say that it was on him at the time, cool. And it, I guess yeah, it kind of makes yeah. it even cuter. Um, I guess, it but it, like, it would make it really cool if that's just something he happens to, it would add to the sentimentality of Cassie and it would be like, oh, so this did affect him. So this, he did care about this. He, he carries it with him and stuff, but, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I'm excited regardless. I'm excited to see how this all works out. Uh, another fucking banger, just another wonderful episode. And, mm. uh. I, you know, I watched it once this morning when I woke up and was like, oh, yeah, that was good. You know, uh, I, I texted you. I was like, it was pretty fucking solid. I watched it a second time and I went, oh, fuck. Yeah, I, I fucking love this one. You know, like it, 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 it wasn't one that exactly nailed me the first watch. But the second watch, I'll tell you what, um, that shit, that shit hit me. Uh, let's go over our favorites real quick uh, mm. one more time. We got favorite character, performance, scene, and line. For me, I've got Clea listed as my favorite character. Fucking loved her this week. It was between Clea and Marva. Both pimps. Both badass. Really loved that shit. Performance, no doubt. Genevieve O'Reilly mm -hmm. as Mon Mothma. Absolutely obliterated her scenes this week. It was uh, She was far and away the most fun character to watch on screen. Um, favorite scene. Marva telling Cassian, you know, she has to stay, he has to leave. Just an exquisitely well-written and acted scene again, but it also tugged at the heartstrings more than anything else in this episode. And uh, that's that's kind of what I'm looking for, you know, the familial, the, the bit about love, just like, oh, god damn, god hmm. damn. Uh, and that was almost my favorite line, but the revolutionary spirit coming through with, has anyone ever made a weapon that they didn't use from Luthen? Had to be had to be the one I chose. So uh, those are my favorites. What about you? I got uh, Marva as uh, the the favorite character here. Um, got to give her some recognition for for the for that scene for sure. Um, mm. And and her just I forgot that she instantly grabbed a gun like that she was going to go at that moment. Mm. You know she she doesn't have another moment to waste. But yeah, uh, favorite character there. Uh, performance. Yeah, it goes to Genevieve O'Reilly for sure. Um, for, for, for Mon Mothma. Um, and she gets, uh, the scene and the line nod from me. Ooh, um, the performance so, scene and line for Mon Mothma. Yeah. Mothma. So, uh, she, uh, the scene where she's speaking to Tay Colma. Um, and, and I, I don't know, just that, that the full swell of like right before Perrin's about to walk over of the music just getting like super oh. intense and then, and then oh. being like, being like, don't trust him. Smile. All right. Everything's good. Flip it. Like that scene was like, so fucking good. Oh, she's and, taking a little uh, bit. She's learning yeah. a little bit from Luthen there, you know, yeah. like, uh, Oh, it was so good. Um, and I don't know. I love, I, I'm loving the Mon Mothma side of the story a lot more than I thought I would. I thought I would be way more focused on like the Cassian and, and you know, just uh, the, the main storyline. But I don't know this uh, Mon Mothma and Luthen. I'm very much I more get intrigued back by to that shit. You know, yeah. every time. 
And the the line was, I show you the stone in my hand, you'll miss the knife at your throat. Um, talking to, to take Holma again, like you, as the music's like ramping up and as she's like, yeah, um, I don't know if my politics are are too hot, heavy for your taste or whatever. Like I almost went with that one, but, um, that was such a great, like the fact that she threw it back in his face, like, yeah, bro, you talking about, you talking all this talk, but where's that action at? Yeah. Like we, some of us are organizing. What are you up to, homie? Um, she's like, I'll give you that chance though. We would be honored if you would join us. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that shit was so good. Are you, are you ready to give this episode a rating? I think I am. Oh yeah. All right. Let's let me it. lay it out for the folks. We've got three, enjo- three ratings. We take the average of those ratings and it becomes our overall rating for the episode. The first of which is enjoyment. That's just how much the episode resonates with us on a personal level. Uh, varies week to week it's very subjective no no objectivity to be considered here it's just however you're feeling uh after that we head over to genre and this spy thriller shit in star wars is going to keep doing well it's the perfect universe for this sort of for this genre this is just perfect star wars like it's it continues to be amazing and then uh critical rating that's all things considered that go into critically creating film uh Direction, writing, acting, score, all things considered, objectively, we rate that there. We take the average, and it becomes our overall rating for the episode. Obviously not completely objective. We got our enjoyment rating in there, but that's what makes it ours. So let's start with enjoyment Mm. on a scale of 1 to 10. Mm. How are we feeling about this one? Well, I do have some hesitation. So I don't think it's an instant ten. I don't. I don't think it's an instant um, ten either. But I don't think it's super far below it. Um, no, the axe forgets. Okay, so that's that's just the the them talking, right? That, that was, was another, that, that was another that talk was, in the episode. Yeah, th- we gave that a nine seven five, and I think, um, ooh. I think Which I'm episode there. do I like more? I, I, I think do, I'm every bit on that level. Can I say that I enjoy that episode more than this? I don't think so. Can I say less? I don't think. Uh, I think it's it's right right there. I think so, so. too. I, it's, it's right where I was falling as well. Um, the show continues to not only uh, impress, but it somehow continues to find its footing. Like, it's only becoming more and more assured in what it is. And it keeps knocking it out of the park. Like it just, it keeps fucking this shit up. And and mm. I, I gotta go nine seven five because this was just so fucking riveting to watch. I'm on the edge of my seat at a goddamn dinner party, bro. We're at a fucking dinner party. Yeah, you've got true. me. Drooling, you've got me drooling over the screen right now. Like, what true. a fucking exquisitely done show. And the wow. the tight or the web of. Of of spies and all the the background shit that's going on, you know, like just so all the storylines that are gonna eventually just start to clash and come together. Like, well, I guess maybe not. Maybe more. It's more of arcs and and jumping around instead of really. But I guess they're maybe building the web right now. That's mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah, they're building the rebellion. Uh, so yeah. yeah, I don't know. The spy shit is. Is getting good. Is is up there too. Oh yeah, and that brings us to genre rating, where it will again do exceedingly well. We obviously don't get a a heist or anything this week, but you know that scene with Clea, the scene with Luthen and Mon, Mon at the dinner party, uh, Cassian sneaking around, Ferrix not being caught. Like it was another absolute fucking banger. In that in that. On that side of things, is it another perfect mm. ten though? No, not a ten. I feel like this one's more like a nine two five. All right, all right. I feel like like it was it was good, and there were very tense moments where nothing was really happening. You know, like it made you feel very tense, even though like yeah, we were just at a dinner party and Mon Mothma was just speaking to to him. Or, whatever um but i i I feel like um even like on 
the axe forgets. Like that was the suspense was building up towards a mission in which they were like getting really scared and Cassie was like, Yeah, nah, like this is how it's gonna be. You'll you'll sleep after it's done. You know, like I don't know, it was um I don't know. I guess I, I don't know if I'm being too harsh on it or not. But I mean no, it's still think, a nine two five. Like Yeah, like that's still that's still damn good. I just uh I think back to we gave episode two a nine five. That's true. And, episode uh, two. What happened? Episode two. Let's episode see. two is when Tim decides to rat. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much the crux of the episode is him following Bix and uh, Cassie and around. There's also the fact that Luthen arrives in episode two. That's when we first see him. Yeah, I can't um, give it lower than that. No, that's why I was like, I'll give it nine five. I'll I'll agree. I'll yeah. I'll. I'll match it, but uh, I just think yeah. that uh, the the Clea shit, uh, Mon Mothma at the dinner party, organi- like organizing in front of Imperials. Oh, nine Imperials. seven five. We think yeah, you're, you're all the, we're working all the way up there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, that's where I, that's where that's about where I was. I was I was trying to I was trying to work you up. Yeah, and the ISB shit was actually cool. Um, I forgot about all the ISB shit, the, the mm-hmm. combatants to the spy shit. Like, yeah, uh, I thought you know I'm actually okay. I dig. They're they're planting a lot of seeds. It's the start of a new arc. That's mm-hmm. that's what this is. It's the start. Yeah, it's the start of a new arc. So now, what I will say is that this is probably the weakest uh, amongst the weakest of the episodes. Critically, I think this one, uh, not not amongst the weakest of the episodes, but uh, it was still exquisitely well written mm. i don't think it stands out as much direction wise um yeah and like what really was the story here the yeah whole... i had a little bit of a i had a little bit of a pacing issue you know uh it was just it was basically fallout it was just what's everyone up to after aldani um you know i think uh maybe it's just ultimately that Cassian starts free and ends up in prison. It's kind of a uh, like we definitely start in a different place than we end up, which is good. You know, I I, I don't want us to not mm-hmm. make any progress. Um, but beyond that, you know, Mon Mothma's still her storyline has been just kind of chipping away at a larger storyline the whole time. She hasn't really had a full story in any given episode. Neither is Luthen really. Um, mm. besides those first two or three episodes or the second and third episode um vel and cinta are still left rather open marv has got a pretty solid one this week um when cassian shows up it's like come with me the conclusion of hers is i can't go um but i'd say that's about the only place where i can confidently say we got like a a really good story with a really full complete story with a character yeah Um, huh uh, let's see. I mean, the lowest we've given any episode is episode two out of seven. Um, do you think it's, I think it's definitely better than that. Like that's, that's okay. the thing is that regardless of how I don't feel the direction was as strong as it's been, I do think every single character interaction was fucking great. Like, while we didn't uh we didn't have that complete story that I like to look for week to week, it still managed to just suck me all the way in. The ve- like I remember I remember every part of the episode. You know, like I mm-hmm. I'm not missing anything. You know, I remember every I remember that we started with Cyril, we went to the ISB, we went to Mon Mothma and Luthan after that. Went back like we just kept these character interactions one after the next Vel and I think Vel and Clea are after that with the inner cuts to Cinta. Like it's, it was still exquisitely well done. So I don't, I don't think I dip uh, so far down as a seven. I think I mean, I'm above an eight um, above. But, so better than the, the premiere and episode four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So somewhere in between. So not, okay. I think like an eight, Five. Um, I think it's about eight, seven, five. 
I don't yeah, know if it deserves five. a full nine. Nine is kind of high for this one. I feel. I think I'm there um, with you. I think an eight, I think an eight five is fair. I think that's yeah. kind of where I was coming down at. Um, and if we rounded that out, it would become a ninety three percent on the old tomato meter. And on IMDb, <laughs> it was it's only had seven hundred and seventy seven reviews, but it was Not it's given an eight point four. Uh, now that number's a thousand. I just refreshed. Um, in the time we've been recording. Wow. Um, so a thousand people have, have given it a review at an 8.4. So, um, okay. We're a bit okay. more friendly here. Um, just a wee bit, but let's see. It was still a good episode. No, it was a great episode. It was indeed. And oh, I, I found a way for Rotten Tomatoes to give us episode by episode scores. Mm. Episode 7, currently with 8 critic ratings, is at a 100%. What? Yeah, yeah. Not so... Not Ooh, so what? It's only, it's only 8 reviews. It's only 8. Uh, if that if if this episode's 100, then last episode's a 115. It's also at 100. Um, so should be. Yeah. Yeah, episode 6 was at 100. Episode 5 is at 100. Damn. Episode four is at a ninety. Episode three. Wow, we gave it a ninety as well. Episode four. Okay. Episode three is at a ninety-two. Give it a ninety-seven. Ninety-eight. Episode actually. two is an eighty-nine. Eighty-two. Okay. Yeah. You're a little harsh there. Episode one was a ninety-two. So ninety. All right. Figured that out. That's cool. But yeah, so. We gave this one a 93%, which brings it to, what, fourth on the season out of seven so far, which isn't uh, not too shabby. Episodes three and five are leading. Tied for tied second. Tied for first. No, they're tied for second because episode six got a 90. Oh, 992. You're right. Oh, duh. Yeah, duh. The best. Duh. Without a doubt, the best episode of the season. Yeah, it's tied for fucked. second. But yeah, and this there. one was just this one was just a really great episode of but, Star Wars. Yeah. You know, I uh, I really really enjoyed it, and uh, I'm really high on this show, dude. It continues to just blow me away. Like we got the previously on, and at the end of the previously on, I went fuck. I love this show. You know, <laughs> like I was just like like audibly, it was like six forty five a.m. that I was watching it. <laughs> Damn, I was, like, wow. I was like. Fuck! I love this show. I woke up invigorated because Andor was was available to me, and I was just nice. like, yeah, yeah. "I love this show, man." Uh, so yeah, such a, I, such a nice start to the Wednesday, oh, like Wednesday morning. Just some Andor just feels great coming out of it. Like even though Cassian's in prison and all, it's like I I don't know. It's like I got my my Andor. Episode I got my, I got my Andor fix. Mm-hmm. Um, and the next Wednesday we get to double up. We don't get just an episode of Andor, but we also get the animated shorts Tales of the Jedi. That's uh, it's one week away. That's in a week? Yep, that is next Wednesday. Um, be about uh, – all the episodes are like 17 minutes or less. So it's uh, – Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all shorts, so it's not going to take too long. I've heard – I've read suggestions that you sit down and watch it all in one sitting. Go ahead and make that happen. So I'm thinking, regardless of how – Oh, they're all coming out at once. Yeah, it's all it's all there. All mm-hmm. there next Wednesday. Um, I'm thinking we do an episode on Andor. I think we might we might have to go ahead and roll into Tales of the Jedi as well. Um mm-hmm. All right, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's nice. I didn't know that that was a week away. I know yeah, I, I know I've been seeing a lot of marketing for it and a lot mm-hmm. of a lot of stuff on Twitter and stuff, but I, I didn't know it was a a week away. Yeah. A week away, a week away. This is where I get updated on everything right right here. I got you. I got you, homie. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Well, with that, I think we conclude this episode of the Andor After Party by us, the Penny Bloom Podcast. If you would, head to patreon.com slash co-robloom where you'll find over 50 hours of exclusive content, including a ton of book reviews, a ton of comic book pull lists, so many movie reviews, all that exclusive content, all for three bucks a month. Uh, which greatly helps the podcast. It costs money, and I don't make any off of it unless it's over there. 
So again, patreon.com slash Coro Bloom. That's C O R O B L O O M. If you would head to Twitter, follow at Penny Bloom Pod, follow on Instagram at Penny Bloom Podcast. I was Colton Robertson. I was joined by Joseph George. What's up, Hammy? Oh, it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, and it is always a pleasure to have you. You fucked with me and Joe this week. Remember to come back next week for the Andor After Party. Stick with us for the 52-year journey through film on Fridays, uh, where this Friday is Django Unchained. Join us for Fire and Bloom, our House of the Dragon podcast. Only got the finale left next week, but the Game of Thrones content won't stop there. Because the Monday after that, Winter is Blooming Begins, a Game of Thrones rewatch podcast. Uh, If you've watched Game of Thrones and you're trying to watch along with us, you better turn that shit on every once a week, every week for 73 weeks. Uh, We're we're covering every episode week after week. And we're going to start the week after House of the Dragon ends. So that shit is right around the corner and I cannot wait for winter is blooming. Remember, peace, love, and bloom. And I show you the stone in my hand so that you miss the knife at your throat.